it is time. The day Nick's new X3 is actually going to become drivable again. Maybe we'll get past two miles on it. You're looking good, man. Looking real good. Yeah, straighten her out. Bring her right in. I don't think there's anything important in those. Good enough, man. We can work on the rear for sure there. Yeah, we'll just kind of uh, move the rest of the way. <laughs> Wow. This is an interesting setup. So back to about speaking to the usefulness of this Defender. Like, <laughs> just commenting on the way up. It tows good. It's the best machine to have around. It's towing probably 2,500 pounds here. Yeah. I bet. And in low range, it feels like there's nothing there. But aside from the Defender, here it is. The new machine. If uh, you got a name for it, comment below. We don't know of a good project name for this yet, but this is the XDS that we stripped down to steal the parts for beast mode. And today we got things popping off in the garage that niceness has not been seen before at this level <laughs> for X3s for a long time. This is going to be the, the nicest thing you've had yeah. on this uh, entire journey, really. Not that the other X3 wasn't nice when we got it, it was, but. This is new. This is going to be, this is going to top it. Right. So, uh, anyway, I guess just watch us put this thing together. We got some stuff from our friends at Lone Star. We got some stuff from our friends at Zollinger Racing Parts. Boom. It's going to be a good it's, one. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. So, it's all fresh. Fresh, new, clean. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, ripping in a nice, clean, tight trail unit again. Tell me about it, man. All so, right. Stay tuned. Intro, and then here we go. down moving stuff getting ready to work on the back let's talk about what we got for this bad boy so you guys have seen the LSR stuff in the past uh, when we did beast mode in white we'll show you what's coming for this one next but in this box I have something from our friends at Zollinger that uh, you're gonna want and you're gonna need so the rear end of your x3 it's weak let's just throw that out there yep a lot of issues with it Zollinger has fixed those issues so uh, wrapped in this box is glory nice stuff and this is Power. important just to you know kick the day off right yeah you want to start the day off with nice stuff. trying to make a habit of yeah starting the day off on a high point getting everybody so, in the right mood we have nothing but zrp koozies koozies that's how you fix your rear end on your x3 <laughs> what in the world is that sound it's an incoming call <laughs> Oh shoot, I'll have to call Mark later. Oh, I have to swipe. Oh my gosh, I feel bad now. So rude. Okay, we'll just cut all that out. So these koozies are gonna fix it. You ready? Yep. Done! <laughs> Zero feet power. Not sure that we followed the instructions there. I don't think that's right, but. Anyway, though, first thing here <sighs> uh, internal to the rear end strength of your X3 is this wonderful, beautiful. Fully billet, 100% American made. Pro I'm running out of things to say. Heck, Shopping. yeah, dude. <laughs> Boom. Oh, ZRP full plate. So this thing is is hardcore. Wow. It's got the American flag. It's got a ZRP logo. It's fully billet. It's got a D ring hook on it here. That's uh, machined. So uh, nice, man. The rest of it's anodized. <sighs> yeah, the stock pull plates on these things are basically a joke. There's no, yeah. There's no attachment point to them. They're weak. They bend. The holes wop out in them. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, what this is is where your radius rods attach. So in the back end of your X3, you got six radius rods, lower, middle, upper. And this thing ties them all together in the middle and keeps it really, really strong. And we got something else to show you for that, too, in a second. But that's your pull plate. That's awesome. Neat. To the next thing here. We just talked about radius rods. So it would only be fitting. Speaking of radius rods. Put some fresh. Brand new, wonderful, lovely, ZRP, American <laughs> made, billet, radius rods. Oh no, I think there's a knife over there. Yeah, there's a knife right well. there. It's okay. So these must be 
the uppers. Okay, the okay, okay. Anyway, there we they see are. them. You got yourself some yep. uh, FK Himes on there. They're billet. They're made to be strong. There's the uppers. And you guys, if you've been watching for a while, you've seen these before. So the Project 168 Razor has got the ZRP radius rods on it. And it has gone just through a lot with them. Oh, it's We've had zero really issues. Bad. Yeah. Treated very bad, and these things are really strong. And, I mean, you talk about racers use these things, and like, they're hardcore. So yep. these are the 6061 series. They also have a 7075, which is like an even tougher aluminum series that you can get yep. if you're yep. hardcore. So these, I believe, are the lower radius rods. They are, oh no, I can't even tell anymore. I believe they're the lower. They're arched. Yep. A little more grind clearance in the back, so if you're clearing stumps or rocks or going off-road, you're gonna want clearance to radius rods in the back. So that was kind of the idea with these, right? Because there was nothing really wrong with the Lone Star radius rods that were on beast mode. They were good, they were strong. You know, no issues with them. But these are cool because they're high clearance. They're right there, man. And for what, yeah. I mean, those, good units, but this sucker needed some fresh bling and some more clearance for what we're going to be doing with it, so. Yeah, plus, fill it. Just yeah. fill it overall. <laughs> Bill it alive. Like, especially when you know nothing about stuff. You look at things that are billet and you just say, oh, it's got to be better. Just start throwing the word billet around. It's got to be better. <laughs> I know it's better because it's a billet. Why isn't everything made a billet? Uh, it's a billet. Try to unwrap these while talking and just really, they're wrapped up surprisingly well. Sorry, man. I really, I feel you. <sighs> I feel your pain in this in this case from behind the camera, just wanting to help, not so, being able to help. These are the mids. Okay. These are the middle. These are your total length rods. And uh, look at this. They have like a little gusset in there. Yeah. To make sure you remain extra strong. And just a beautiful job. Those look are look how uh, nice these are. Yeah. They leave a little gusset there, a little gusset there. They're billet. They're freaking anodized. They're hardcore. They got FK USA made pine joints in. They're made in the USA. Check them out. SideBySideBlogParts.com, get them, we'll give you a discount for the first 10 sets sold on the website. Oh, okay. How about, uh, I mean, what should we say? 10% discount on the first 10 sets. No. Boom! Done. Okay, let's put them on, or you got more stuff? We got I more guess. stuff. This is a long video. <laughs> so, you've seen these before, but not with this color. <whistles> Lone Star Racing, baby. Dang. Hardcore. Yeah. I don't know what they're made out of. Some sort of steel. Are they chrome molly? I think they're chrome molly, man. Okay. Yeah, they're uh, they're super legit. And those things also have just been put through the snot on oh, beast mode. We beat them hard. Zero issues other than dinging yeah. the paint. They haven't even actually, like, dinged a tube, which is really surprising. No. Because we've, like, Nick ran into the back of me with his Razor Turbo S one time, rolled up on the radius rod, didn't bend it. Drove on top of the radius rod, yeah. didn't bend it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hit things directly, rocks directly. So this is an upper... Uh, you can see it's beautiful. Our friends at Lake Painting here in Michigan uh, stripped the white mm, off. It's not going to focus. Anyways. It's okay. Gave it a black epoxy two-part coat uh, with an epoxy primer, and it's going to be super tough. And we also got new uh, FK Uniballs going into it, so that's a really nice addition. Heck yeah, we'll man. for that, and here's the rest of the Look kit. Look at those suckers. So here's the lower uh, A-arm for the front. Obviously hardcore, giant gusseting. Beautiful welds, chromoly, recoded. Yep, yep, and then yep. The trailing arms of Doom. So, if you guys remember the install video from the last time we had these things, you'll know just how absolutely beautiful, wonderful, incredible, and nice these are. Yeah, man. This is. Uh, we talked about this before. This is. Yeah. These are the exact parts that were on the uh, the X3 that we chased through Baja in 2017. Took yep. second place, man. You so know, this is are, Baja level yeah. hardcore stuff. Baja level, super strong, and uh, if you're out there bending parts like a lot of people are, these are the upgrades to go to. So I recommend them. We run them. Our friends run them. Racers run them. We're not going to be a vendor for them. Ooh. Boom. Okay. So okay. We okay. Hooked up with Lone Star and uh, said, "Hey, we got to sell these things. It's been over a year since we've had it. They've been super tough. They've been very reliable. We haven't bent. We haven't broken anything." And these are parts you can really stand behind. So yeah, absolutely, man. Side by side blogparts.com. We're gonna have the. Uh, I believe this is the STS kit, which is the stock width, 72 inch width. They also have the MTS kit, which I believe yep. is the long travel, or is that? Doesn't yeah, matter. it's the long travel kit. Yeah. Anyways, yep. so freaking good that they're used, repainting them, putting them on a brand new 2019. Just they're that good. I'm so. I'm excited, man. Yeah, that was a long-winded set there, but there was a lot to show you guys. There's also one more part that we don't have here yet. 
It's at Doug's house. We'll go grab it. We'll talk about it when we're going to install it. But for now, these are the big pieces, and uh, I guess just stay tuned. We're going to install this stuff. Maybe a little time lapse, maybe a little video. We'll figure it out. And uh, the new X3, uh, whatever project name, is going to be looking good. Let's do it. Good. Good, good, good. More good stuff. Good. Oh, whoa. Stickers. That's a little, a little giveaway. Um, what these are here is the last piece of the puzzle for the rear end of beefiness. Beef mode. It's a beef puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Project beef mode? Oh, okay. Be We've be been weird. struggling to come up with a name because there's not like one defined use for this machine. It's going to yeah. be basically your new general use trail machine duner. You know, there's nothing like other than, you know, the suspension things that are going on today. Too crazy. Right. Beef mode though. <laughs> It just really plays on beast mode. Anyway, it's funny. <laughs> so the last piece of the puzzle here is another uh, part from our friend at friends at ZRP. So their rear end of this thing is really interesting. The majority of your off-road machines do not look like this. So the X3 has basically three sets of bolts that are all connected together, and this is where your radius rods hook into the back. Over time, lots of big hits, you know, side loads, whatever. Uh, people are wallowing out the holes uh, on the back side of these bolts where these go through. So these will push through and you'll essentially ovalize, you know, the hole you have here. Yeah, so then your alignment goes out of whack, yeah. you, know, you get clunks and things just aren't going yeah, well. You get one tire sitting in weird or cocked weird because each one of these radius rods has its own uh, thing that it controls. So, ZRP, they test this stuff. They run these things in Ultra 4, they run them at King of the Hammers, they do some... Uh, uh, like Baja style BITD and score races. So they come up with a solution and they call it a dog bone kit. Yep. So this is made out of really some cool. sort of hardcore steel. I don't know what it is. But what these do is it's gold, man. It's good. It's made of gold. They replace your stock little junker alignment pad with this hardcore beefy unit. And it really just aligns your rear end and keeps it in tip top shape. So they install before you install anything else. And they have kits that allow you to run these with any sort of uh, setup in the back. So these are set up to run with uh, standard Heim joints like we're gonna have on the ZRP arms, but they also have ones, uh, I believe, that work with stock radius rods. Not that you want stock radius rods, but they have it. These, so, are, uh, these are really cool though to work with their radius rods because they're machined yeah. and that actually takes place of one of the spacers in the rod. So that shoulder fits right into the rod end, all integrates together yeah. super nicely. And these basically take all the load off of the frame and then just keep, keeps your frame for alignment like it should be, not for strength. So these go on super easy and uh, we're gonna run them. And I'm really excited to have them. I don't know which way this one goes on, probably like that. But anyway, they hook in there like that, your radius rods hook up in the back, and uh, all of a sudden you got yourself a way beefier rear end on your X3. So these are, uh, I believe a couple hundred dollar deal. They're made of super hardcore strong steel. Don't know what kind. We'll flash it up now because I'll figure it out after <laughs> I said this. But, um, Maybe it's a secret, who knows? It's probably a not. steel, space age steel. <laughs> But anyways, we can get you a deal on those too, if you want them. I think they're a good yeah. idea. So. Yeah, we'll probably do package deals where if you want radius rods and dog bones and a pull plate, we can get you something set up, um, you know, on the low low. So cool. watch us install all this fun stuff and be thankful that I'm going to have a machine finally that doesn't have <laughs> crazy camber or alignment issues and the rear end's not just a bench. Anyway, uh, I'm excited. All right, Thank let's you. do it. Bones I can't do it. <laughs> they look really cool on there. Like I really enjoy that color. <laughs> yeah, that color looks really cool. Black and gold, bronze. That just looks like a really nice thing all together. So these do have a pretty tight tolerance. So uh, we found out that installing the radius rods and then running a nut to kind of pinch everything together before you put the pull plate on was the best way to do it. Um, 
ZRP doesn't want this back end to move, so tolerance has got to be tight, man. It tightens up the back end of that of this so much. Like honestly, yeah. they seem pretty cheesy in their stock configuration. This makes a lot of sense. Feel a lot better about it. So, so we're to the point now where we can install this beautiful pull plate, uh, which we will do now. And this replaces something that's pretty much just like Garbage. twenty gauge junk metal. I don't know where it's at, but. I think we actually used it on beast mode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we also <laughs> had a gusset in the back though too, but uh yeah, that thing doesn't need this kind of stuff anymore. So this thing looks like a freaking spider, dude. Mm -hmm. Look at how tough this looks. Yeah. Hard to describe on video how cool that is. It's uh it's a really nice setup, man. Full on cool. Yep, gonna have some confidence in that. The fuck is gonna be? I mean, beef mode sort of makes sense. I know, beef mode was a joke, but seriously. So yeah, it all went on, it all worked, tolerances are tight. Yep, 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 yep. But we're talking. A little doing, a little prying, a little tapping. Get the nuts started, pull it all together, but it is not moving now. No, and that thing is so cool. The American flag, the logo, the sweet arms. What more can you ask for? Maybe a good set of wheels and tires. <laughs> Still don't have that. Yeah, unfortunately, we got to talking about this thing and how excited we were that it was going to be all fresh and nice, and then realized we didn't really have a set of wheels and tires for it. So, yeah. I mean, we have stuff sitting around. <laughs> yeah, maybe the fuels, who knows. But anyway, really excited about this. So, we'll continue working on this bad boy. We'll get these uh, trailing arms tied into the radius rods, and then maybe look at putting the shocks on. Okay, okay, okay. Well, probably the axles first, actually. Yeah. Doesn't look like a lot of progress has been made, but a lot of progress has been made. The ZRP stuff in the rear, pull plate, dog bones, and radius rods are all in. The knuckles are on. The bolts uh, going through the knuckle into the uh, trailing arms are on. Trailing arms are on. Got the brake lines all hooked up. All we got to do now is put the hubs on, put the shocks on, and uh, the rear ends darn close. Heck yeah, man. These things look simple, but like the X3s are a bit of a puzzle back here. There's yeah. a lot of parts that come together. You know, three, four pieces that use like a common bolt, so it's a bit of a trick to get it all together, but it looks super good, man. I think this is the toughest rear suspension setup yeah. that we'll have had on a machine so far, so. Pretty happy about that. Right. And then the uh, FedEx man showed up and delivered us uh, all new bushings for the front, so these are OEM bushings. You know, everybody's got their opinion on bushings, but the ones that were in beast mode for 1,800 miles, like, they worked and they were tight. Honestly, still in good shape. Yeah, Doug, just, yeah so. Doug's like, don't even get new ones. And I said, I feel so bad putting brand new stuff on here and not getting new ones. Oh, money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's smart, man. That's never a bad, bad call. So They're nothing special. Like, they're rubbery. Like, they're not even real hard. Really nice, though. They're so easy to swap in and out on. Yes. Because they're not that hard plastic. They don't chip and break. And so we got uh, all new those, and then we got these, uh, whatever the heck they are, the metal pieces. So these metal pieces go, uh, they probably, they basically like capture the bushings in the arm. I'm trying to pull one out. Oh yeah, the, little wear, the wear, little wear plates. Yeah. yeah, so these stop the frame from wearing out as the suspension goes up and down. And these kind of get, they capture in the uh, bushing on each side. So you'll see how that works. They're actually important. So if you've worked on a Can-Am front end, you've probably looked at those things and bent them, removing them, and then throwing them out and laughed at them, thought they were nothing. But they actually do something. So yeah. it's a good idea to have them in there. But from here, it's just, uh, like I said, shocks got to go on. We got to hook up the sway bar. Um, and we got these, you know, beefy LSR sway bar attachments. If you watched the first Beast Mode stuff, you'd seen that. Um, but man, she's ready to roll soon. Front's gonna be a little more tough, but whatever. Let's get the shocks on her, man. I'm ready to see tires and wheels back on this thing. My body's ready. All right. Beef mode. 
She's uh, whoa. <laughs> that jack stand is uh, looks like it's on. Okay, jack stand's not on. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, anyway, I mean, yeah, we're good. But um, so working on a trailer is tough when you're trying to reassemble. Disassembly's no problem. Reassembly's tough. So yeah. Currently working on that. We realize this is a haggard setup. In a perfect world, we'd have a fork truck under this thing. We would have lowered it into here. We'd have everything set up properly, but unfortunately, it's not how it went down. But we have meld fuels that we're gonna run in this thing and we'll get her sorted out soon. That was hopefully gonna be the glory moment. Ended up being the not glory moment. All right, we didn't drop it off the jack. Nothing happened and this is where we're at now. It worked perfectly. <laughs> Working on trailers, it's a great thing to do. Yeah, I would recommend it 10 out of 10 times. So Doug, lower that bus. <laughs> it's relieving to have tires on at least half of this machine. Yeah. Watch it scrub out. Oh, it didn't really scrub out. Got them sticky fuels on there. The stickies. So I think now we're gonna get a jack stand under the front or a jack under the front of this thing and uh, basically roll it backwards. I think we should just bring the trailer in further. Just work around where it's at. Well, that's a good call. Do it. So if you look from this angle, it's a complete X3. If you look from this angle, it's an X3 that appears to have been in a very bad collision, <laughs> but actually it's all perfect and was just taken apart, yeah. so. And then our friend Scott from Honda East got us this bumper uh, and apparently, maybe he doesn't want us to say this, doesn't matter. Apparently it came in damaged. So, um, they were just going to scrap it. He says this. Leonardo probably wants that. Little, I said this. Yes, absolutely. A yeah. Yeah. little bit damaged. Perfect for Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pre-wrecked. Perfect. Right. So, Doug's going to get the Giganto Jack up in here. That thing weighs a ton. It does. So, it does. Look at the muscles there. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to get this front end assembled. I believe it's going to be easier than the back end. Yeah, the rear end of these things are just deceiving, man. They look simple, but it takes some time. The front ends actually are pretty pretty easy to work on. So once you know how to get like the plastics off quickly, yeah. the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Yeah, the arms just like slide on. Would you have a look at that? Would you just look at it? So exciting. So she's coming back together, boys. If you guys haven't seen the front end of an X3 before, the uh, arms don't go on like you would normally have an arm go on on another machine. So there's basically just two studs that each arm sits on. So there's two in the back, two in the front, and you just slide the arm on as opposed to like fitting it into a pre cut out space in the frame. It seems weird at first. Not that big a deal, honestly. But Biggest issue is if you bend one arm, you have to take all of this stuff off to get one arm off. Yeah. Because it's true. all hooked in together. Right. If you're taking all the arms off, it's not really more work taking one arm off. Yeah. Hopefully you don't bend any arms. If you bend one of these arms, you will have bent your frame, most likely. Yeah, LSR arms are not going to bend easily. So You'll this have other issues. paint job is looking beautiful here. You can see the LSR tag. Maybe I'll come in and do something with that. Anyway, though. Ooh, painter in white, silver. Ooh. Platinum. Platinum. Mm. So we just put in our new, uh, what I'm trying to call those right now, think Axles? about it. No, those, the yes. Uh, and the wear plates? Uniballs. Uniballs, okay. Uniballs went in, now the plates are, plates, dang it, my brain's gone. It's been a long day, come on, on Doug. It's been a long day, it took us, a long, it took us like four or five hours to get that rear end all together. And it's warm out now, I'm not used to that, but. Anyways, yeah, bunch of new parts, it's all fresh. Bushings, wear plates, uniballs, axles, like, Obviously, it's going to have all the 2019 outers, brakes, hubs, bearings. Like, this is fresh, tough unit. So fresh and tough. It's got the barcode on the sway bar, which is important for traceability in case you need to find out where your sway bar came from. That's where it is. Other than that, though, just still kicking, still pushing. So there's a lot of little things that we got to put in here uh, to make it work. But we're getting there. And uh, Doug got this side pretty well done, it looks like. Yeah, I'm about to put the hub on, man. And, uh... Then uh, some more stuff after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah, stuff starting to lose it as well. But we'll get there. Yep. We'll keep pushing. Friends at Rocky Mountain overnighted us uh, some axles. 
Well, the front end is together, at least suspension wise it's together. So we got the sway bar hooked up, we got uh, both knuckles on, we got the brakes and calipers and rotors and new axles in. And Doug's coming in and greasing up the old bushings. So that's yeah, real cool. Was... Last <laughs> yeah. thing we have to do is put on our Baja bumper and um, yeah, we'll be all good here. Things are escalating, Doug. The front end is basically back together. We got the plastic on one piece, we got the new Baja bumper on. Everything's tight, everything looks good, and it's nice working on a fresh machine. It is, man. Yeah, it was a lot of work, but it was all clean. It went together really nice. There's light at the end of the tunnel now, so a few more screws to put in this plastic, pop the hood back on it, put the tires on it, make sure the alignment's semi-close to okay. Good enough for me. And then uh, go send this thing, man. Need some air. You yourself or the machine? And me myself. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. It's got uh, like regular harnesses in it, which is something that we haven't attacked yet. Kind of just remembered that. Ugh, Actually, yeah. not even harnesses. It just has like freaking two points. Hmm, probably should have put harnesses in it today. Yeah, maybe that'll be next time. We Don't worry about it. We got to put on it as well. Yeah, but... we'll get to that. Yeah. Comes in at the last minute. <laughs> Move some jack stuff. Sorry. Hey. Flip this, you guys are doing great. I'm Takes credit for the whole project. I'm no dummy. Anyway, Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, other than the sway bar bolt in the back, which I don't have, everything is bolted on this bad boy. <sighs> that was a big project, man. Huge project. All of a sudden, it doesn't look wrecked anymore, though. So That's a good point. It never was wrecked. So, we're just going to let it down, see what happens. Yeah, we got to get this thing off this trailer. There we go. Pretty much didn't move. I'm <laughs> guessing that the wood is actually very grippy. Yeah. And there's no scrub happening. You weren't intending to run 24 inches of ground clearance. I'd be curious to see where we're at. I assume. The shocks are just set up like they were on beast mode, so. According to this, we are at 22 and a half inches <laughs> of ground clearance. I don't think uh, it's going to be that high when we get it outdoors, but we'll see. So. Yeah, just got to get it off the trailer and roll it. Yeah, we got to get a bolt for the sway bar in the back. Other than that, everything is ready. We'll probably go, uh, you know, double check some nuts, yada yada, and then uh, jump this bad boy. You got to rip this thing, man. So, haven't driven a stock X3 in a long time. It's about to happen. Let's do it. Excited. And for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Beef mode! <laughs> wow, it is so jacked up on that trailer. Wow. Wow. Whoa, we're hitting stuff. It sounded bad. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Thank you, it's Steve's truck. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, we cocked the wheel in Steve's truck. Nick, sorry about your trailer, bud. Dang it, just focused. Yeah, back up a little bit. Well, these things happen. I wasn't watching. I'm sorry, Doug. It's been a long day. We've been screwing a lot of stuff up. Oh, that's so close. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Holy moly, that was tight. Really didn't mess up the fender too much, so that's good. Anyway, holy moly. It is time to roll this thing off the trailer. In fact, I think it's probably time to drive this thing off the trailer. Yeah, it's got to get off this trailer, man. Look at you. Isn't that special? This is uh, a weird feeling. It's so tall, too. Like, holy crap. <laughs> uh, is something stuck? Like, why is it so <laughs> Something seems wrong, but hopefully when it backs off, it'll come down to this world. <laughs> okay, it runs still, so that's good. Looks like it's not scrubbing down. <laughs> Wow. Why is it so dull? <laughs> Maybe it's just because all the fresh parts. <laughs> oh like, my god. Why is it so tall? All the new bushings and all the new. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. That's uh, <laughs> unexpected, but maybe a couple jumps. Is something stuck? Like, what's happening? I don't know. We'll figure it out. No. I think, it's, just, uh, it's just on that spring rate. It's just tight and fresh, man. No. It's right Wait. there. Look at it. I mean, it's still on the tender. You're not getting to the main. Yeah, but I'm saying like it's coming back up. Yeah. 
Why is that so tall? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they changed the shock mounting locations. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true either. Is this just how tall beast mode would have been if it would have had a stock cage? I don't think so. On 32s? I don't think so, but... I'm not sure what's happening, but I do know I'm very happy. So there's been a lot of changes today with this machine. It went from basically salvage level to uh, currently like desert ripper. So obviously we need some doors, lower doors. We need a roof, but other than that, she's ready just to Just ride it, man. Yeah. I'm we'll figure this out. Ready to see this thing go and just worry about the adjustments later. Yep. It's going to rain, so. Good point. Yes. Ready for this? Here we go. I am ready. 1.3 hours, which seems like a lot. 2.2 miles. That's oh my gosh, man. That was that one little drive that we did. Oh my gosh. Miles, so. Come on, old camera. Clean off. I'm making it worse. Anyway. Whew. This thing's tall. It's big. <laughs> They're talking. Oh, it's so quiet and smooth, though. Yeah, this is like uh, the first time we got beast mode back home here. Yeah, man. Fat, sweaty. I got my head, my hat backwards. <laughs> Strangely reminiscent. She feels good, man. Obviously taking it a little slow off the bat because we just rebuilt the entire thing. Right. But, uh, feels good. I don't hear any weird uh, sounds, no plunks. She seems pretty tight. Right, so let's just go take a look. You give her a quick look-see. Yeah, man. Still a lot of ride height, but. Yeah, I mean, so last time we worked on beast mode shocks, uh, it was set up for duning, and the cage was so low on that car that I think it just really gave it the effect of being much lower than it actually was. Right, right. Yeah, but this, like you can clearly tell, it's got some pretty serious ride height, but it doesn't really matter that much. No, it looks good, man. It doesn't look abnormal, so. Yeah, like dudes that run Baja and stuff are way taller than what we're at right now. And um, I think it's probably time to hit the jump and maybe do a once over just to make sure it all looks good and then give her a little sendy. A little sendy. You look good, man. Thank you. Nothing left now but just to uh, rip this bad boy. Send so. this sucker off. It's bone stock, it's nothing special. It's on super heavy desert tires, but I'm so excited about it. Absolutely. Looks good. He's going for it. Oh yeah. Wow, that sounded really good. Like there were no clunks or rattles coming down. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Man, feels really, really good. It looked like it landed super nice. It feels like, super good. It landed great. It's also totally out of gas. Oh no. <laughs> I don't know if you were hearing it. It was going pop, 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 pop. Oh no. That was, that was... like enough, man. Just enough to give her some air. Oh crap, man. But wow. I couldn't believe though, like how softly it came down and there were no clunks, there were no bangs. This is an I OSR, mean... man. This isn't like China level stuff. This is built in USA, awesome stuff. Also ZRP in the back, built in USA, hardcore by hardworking dudes. So. Like we always like to say at the end, I'll try to do this as good as Doug does. Thank you for watching. This would not be possible without you. I can't say that more than Doug does, but it is completely 100% true. Everything we do at this point moving forward in our lives is really centric around the side-by-side -side lifestyle and culture and camaraderie and all these things. And we build awesome friendships with people we never would have met. And um, we hope to build more in the future with people like you. So. Thank you for watching, subscribing, buying parts from the parts store, like, like uh, Doug likes to say, donating on Patreon, that's huge. If you like anything that you saw on this machine, the LSR suspension, the ZRP stuff in the rear, uh, we got wheels and tires, not these, but we have ones that are really cool as well. Belt temp gauges, we got everything that Evo makes. They make all the best parts for X3s. Check it out, sidebysideblogparts.com, and um, we'll get you a good deal. Email. 
to talk to Rick. You know Rick. <laughs> he likes to yell. He likes to swear a lot. Good guy. And uh, he's a great salesman. And uh, we'll get you the best deal on whatever you need. So thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing. You'll see a lot more of this machine very soon. But uh, I'm going to take her for a little trail ride this weekend on my own with a bachelor party with a friend. And uh, we'll report back later next week. And we'll see you then. Heck yeah, dude. Until next time. You know, they couldn't get out of here without doing a jump and talk in the car. I need to feel it. It's a good car. It's really good, man. It's a good car. It is really good.